Hey starters! Today on Starting Ideas, we're interviewing the co-founders of Frisia, Charlie Cordor and Mark Brisiak. Together, these two researchers spun out their research successfully from the University of Washington and created their own company. Frisia is taking on the medical establishment by lowering the amount of time it takes to diagnose infectious diseases to under 10 minutes. This is some amazing research and an amazing business proposition. Let's go chat with them. I'm here with uh, Mark and Charlie of Frisa, and uh, please just Tell me a little bit about your professional and academic backgrounds that uh, led you to this point. I am the co-founder and current CEO of Ophorisa. Mm -hmm. and, um, previous to this, I completed my PhD in chemical engineering, nanotechnology, and molecular engineering here at the University of Washington in Seattle. And um, on top of this, during my PhD, I completed a, a business certificate that allowed me to do a couple things, understand how we can translate a technology that we developed during my PhD while um, being able to understand the steps that is need to take to make a company a big enterprise. So that's what we do in Afrisa. Mm -hmm. um, making a, a simple, affordable, and sensitive test for all infectious diseases. I pretty much fell into science on accident. Like I was always pretty good at chemistry and math and things like that, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I actually started out a medical student um, and then I realized that I didn't really like blood and things like that. So I switched majors like three or four times and ended up landing on chemical engineering and just kind of went with it and then applied to a bunch of jobs. I actually didn't get any interviews or anything like that. So I also applied to graduate school and luckily got into a few and um, decided to come out here to Seattle University of Washington and um, completed my PhD over the past five years with Charlie. And ever since graduation, have just decided to continue running with what we've been working on because I think it's really interesting and, and I think we can have a huge impact on people. So. Awesome. So um, now that we're thoroughly intimidated by your PhDs and professional <laughs> yeah, credentials, yeah. Um, so Forcia, what, what is Forcia making? What is, what is your widget? So Forisa is making the next generation of uh, testing for infectious diseases, right? What we're trying to do is develop a, a simple test that meet the sensitivity that doctors actually want. We we use actually using all the same technology that the pregnancy cell test actually uses, but on top of that, we have a proprietary technology that was developed here at the University of Washington. The technology in titles is that we apply in small electric field. With um, but by doing that, what we do is concentrate and separate the stuff that we don't want to detect. And by concentrating the pathogen that we're trying to detect, we increase the sensitivity of the current pregnancy style test. Lots of people, they go into a clinic, they need to, they don't feel well, they want to get diagnosed, they're not sure what's wrong with them, so they walk in, the doctor will take a sample, and they usually send it out to a laboratory. In Seattle, there's probably downtown, the UW Medicine has lots of laboratories, mm -hmm. but in places like Wyoming and Idaho, more rural areas, they're actually putting them on a plane and mailing them to Denver, Colorado, and things like that. So essentially, there's no very efficient way to diagnose people right now, because it's all being sent out to central laboratories. So right now, the turnaround time on I swab my cheek, a sample is taken, I'm in a rural area, even in the U.S. it gets shipped out. What's the turnaround time on the, the numbers? The, the fastest is 48 hours, but it can take two, three weeks even. So mm -hmm. there's, there's quite a bit of delay in times of turning these around. And you mentioned you said in America. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of zoom out to um, the entire world and developing yeah. countries, there's even huger issues associated with this where there's not even any laboratory facilities. You have um, very small buildings without electrical power, without running water. And these people still need diagnoses and treatment too. So there's, there's a huge lack of testing that can be done at the site where the patient is at. So that's what we're trying to do is these pregnancy tests, which can be run anywhere. So you walk into the clinic, within five or 10 minutes, you get the answer without any electrical power, without any running water, very, very uh, resource efficient. Everything is completely encapsulated. Our test will require a small electrical field mm -hmm. or current that can be provided by a battery from your watch. And, and you're probably thinking like these pregnancy tests do exist today. Um, and they do for some diseases, but the issue is that these tests aren't very accurate for a lot of diseases, which is the problem. So that's what Charlie was mentioning earlier is we developed a method that makes these tests very, very accurate and much more able to give clinicians good results to get better treatment. Okay, so what's the time frame then is uh, for, for this one is just when you're in 
in the uh, seeing the doctor? Or so yeah, so imagine that you go to, to the doctor right now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the doctor calm will take a sample from you because you have a sore throat. You don't know what it is. We're debating between it is a strep, it's not a strep. So what the doctor actually will do is take a sample out of you, um, take the sample, put it in a small vial with a solution to dilute the sample, the, the saliva that we was mm -hmm. able to collect, and take this small solution and put it in our test. Mm -hmm. Then it will press a button and it will take 10 minutes only 10 minutes for the test to run and get a sensitive result mm -hmm. that the doctor will feel confident for them to treat you as a patient. So less than the time it takes for me to uh, get a hankering for espresso, walk across the street, and pick it up, I get mm -hmm. the diagnosis. Exactly. Yeah, and one of the things that at Farisa we, we, we understood early, earliest, in the early stages is that we need to meal, meet all the, the, the requirements that doctors would like within a test. Mm -hmm. Everything from the speed, the sensitivity and the price that our test has to meet in order for the doctors to actually use it to solve the biggest problem, which is detecting infectious diseases accurately. Yeah. Um, when we talk to doctors here in downtown Seattle, we realize that 40% of their population that they actually see in, they're transient. Mm -hmm. They don't come back. Yeah. It's really hard to reach out to them. So because all their testing is being done at the centralized lab, it's really hard for them to to follow up with the patient, to treat the patient, to control the spread of the diseases among the Seattle community. And when Zoom out, we saw the same problem, not only in the US, but at the global scale, right? And that's what we're trying to do for Risa, creating a sensitive test for all infectious diseases. Tell me a little bit about uh, how you were doing the research. How have you been able to take that from research and an idea to actually making it into a business? What we've done is we've kind of laid the foundation for forming a business. So there's a lot of things outside of just the research which is required in order to start these these businesses. And the way that we've done that, I think, is the biggest thing is just getting out in the community and talking to people throughout Seattle because Seattle is a very vibrant entrepreneurial community, but it's also very close-knit. So you go talk to one person, they say, hey, you go talk to this person. And then that person tells you, you go talk to two more people. And everyone's got really good advice. Like you need to, you need to figure out your market. You need to go talk to your customers. You need to do this for fundraising. So I'd say the, the biggest challenge is from going from a research project into a company mm -hmm. is all the things that are associated not with the technology, but with the business. So if you're getting this uh, level of affordability and speed, you know, 10 minute diagnoses, is there a point in the future, perhaps not the immediate future, where I could go down to the Bartels if I'm not feeling good? Yeah, so that, that is the ultimate goal is to do over-the-counter sales where you walk into the, the pharmacy, you spend five or ten dollars, you go home, you take the test and you know your result right away. Uh, that's not what we're initially going to do. Our initial goal is to put these tests in all the different clinics. So mm. I'd say something that's very close to that is you walk down to your corner of Zoom care where you, mm. you fill out a form online, you walk in, within 10 or 15 minutes you get your diagnosis and then you can leave. But yeah, eventually it'd be great if you could walk into the store or the pharmacy and just buy these off the shelf and then do your testing is... It sounds like we're really moving from a, a centralized model of uh, diagnostics with the big labs to a more decentralized and really personal model. Yeah, yeah exactly. and, and Aaron, um, yeah. this technology that we have at Farisa is not only applicable for the healthcare, human care mm -hmm. aspect. Think about your pet, right? Mm -hmm. Think about the dog that you have at home in your apartment that you really care about, right? Yeah they actually suffer the same issues that we suffer, we are suffering as humans. You no know, have an immediate way to diagnose for whatever disease or pathogen your dog has or your cat, right? Mm -hmm. Something that, that we've foreseen also Farisa can tackle, um, although Farisa is a diagnostic company, right? It's an enterprise of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. we, our first market will be humans, within humans will be infectious diseases, with infectious diseases we've seen uh, sexual transmitted diseases, we also mm -hmm. seen um, these pathogens such as strep, flu. Why is that slice and why are those diseases the first, uh, the first on the list? Honestly speaking, was because doctors want it. When we, went, at, <laughs> when we went to interview <laughs> the people that actually need the test mm -hmm. to treat the patients, they actually all said that they want to have a test for a strep A that is sensitive and meet all the requirements that the gold standard is centralized lab meets, um, as well for chlamydia and gonorrhea. We were essentially trying to take the laboratory tests and just put it in the hands of users so that they can get faster information. To give a digital comparison, if you have your, your mobile phone, you can pull it out and you can look up anything almost immediately. 
But when it comes to healthcare, that's not the case. You walk and you're waiting three days in order to get an answer. We're still on the mainframe computer model of healthcare. <laughs> yeah. Library. Or we right. were at library. the library. So it's just, it's a very outdated model of the way that the current healthcare detection system is being run. And mm -hmm. we're trying to bring it into the 21st century yeah, digital trying, age, essentially. Trying to make something small, sensitive, and affordable. That's all we do in FREs. We've been that. doing a lot of like talking to doctors, talking to the end users yep. of your product. Mm -hmm. yep. um, what other aspects have the, uh, the end users impacted? We thought that the test was going to look like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Steve Jobs iMac version. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. So when we went to talk to doctors, they saw this flashy. It's not going to work for us either. <laughs> this flashy looking oval shape device. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, it's really pretty though. <laughs> But we won't buy it. It slips out of my hand. Mm -hmm. It's too colorly. Mm -hmm. the doc then the patients actually get distracted. So we want something that is more medical, mm. more flat, more simple, and less colors. Right? Something clinical looking. And yeah, no, I can totally see that. Yeah. What's uh, one or two of the challenges you have run into, and how have you uh, dealt with those? Uh, at Fariso, as I said, we're solving problems every day, everything from coming out with a good name for the company to being able to develop the test that is sensitive enough to meet these expectations that doctors actually want. Money, obviously. Money, Every yeah. startup company yeah. has money issues. Uh, I agree. Uh, there's a lot of things we don't know. This is the first time we've done a startup company. So mm -hmm. um, just finding mentors that can really help you and push you in the right direction. Yeah. Like very, very simple things like how do you file a trademark, for instance, with our name. Like we don't even know how to do things like that. So just learning. But with two PhDs, I'm sure this... Uh, we actually, <laughs> interesting, Aaron, the, the group is not only formed by us. <laughs> um, the, the, the Farisa team, the leadership team, is formed by Jonathan Posner, who is a professor at the Mechanical Engineering Department and Chemical Engineering here at the University of Washington. Uh, we got Matthew Thompson, who is the current chair of the UW Family Medicine, number one school in the nation. Mm -hmm. Mark, who is a PhD in Chemical Engineering. Myself, who is also a PhD in Chemical Engineering. You probably think that a group of scientists and and, and medical doctors can solve every problem. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, that's not true, right? We always need to reach out to people who have this experience in the medical diagnostic industry, right? These this people who have done it in the past. Mm -hmm. Every time that we go and reach out to them, they're willing to meet with us. That's wonderful. Be, yeah. the, the community in Seattle is fantastic. So um, obviously you have a lot of top-notch uh, researchers and academics. If you could add one person to your team, either a marketing expert or any, any sort of a domain expert, what's the person you would add? We always struggle is having that person who have done in the past, who have taken a company from the startup environment and make it an enterprise, make Some, it the next leader. Someone who can execute. Somebody yeah, that can execute. Yeah. We went out and started asking people, have you done it in the past? How many startups have you done? And we have assembled this team that is the foundation. So you have an awesome team, it sounds like, of advisors, mentors, people have already got their, gotten their hands dirty oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. really you know, are helping you uh, take this from idea to market. And I think, I think the most important thing with finding and leveraging those people and mm -hmm. getting their advice is admitting that we don't know a lot of anything. <laughs> like, yeah. There's so many things that we don't know, so like, you need to be very coachable and just like, learn from people yeah. who have done it. And being able to listen to people. Like the, the biggest reason startups fail is because they usually build something that people don't actually want. Like they don't, they don't go out and talk to people, they don't pivot when they need to. And Obviously you spend a ton of time in the lab and I assume you, you do something to unwind, relax, maybe once in a while. I, I mostly spend time with my wife and my dog. That's mm -hmm. my favorite thing to do. Uh, I'll, I like to go play soccer, go down to the corner, grab a beer, go out to eat. Uh, I love hanging out time with my wife too. Uh, we do not have a dog, although <laughs> I love dogs like Mark. Um, we, uh, we foster dogs for the Seattle Humane Society. Uh, while I love drinking beer with Mark and hanging out on the weekends, I also play rugby from time to time. Cool. So, um, and for both of you, I would like um, one fantasy or sci-fi character that uh, you most enjoy. I'm going to go with Iron Man, just because he makes <laughs> a lot of cool inventions and that's what we're inspiring to do. Yeah. So. I, I really like Bruce Wayne, um, Batman, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who is also a scientist in a way, an inventor. Uh, he's also able to help people in a way. So I think that uh, by doing that, being able to come down from his Wayne Tower and help in the community, that's, that's kind of like also resonates what we're doing. Got to turn it into a sappy answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Aww>. just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. We love you all here at Fariza. So if you're going to leave us with uh, one thought, 
give you one thought that we should uh, take away from this talk, what, what would you leave us with? I would say try to put good people around you. Like mm -hmm. as long as you surround yourself with good people and listen and try to work together, you can usually get a lot of good things done. But yeah, I will say, Aaron, um, for the entire startup community, listen. I will say listen to what Mark says, listen to your, to your colleagues, listen to your, your, your people, listen to the people that you're trying to help. Mm -hmm. Listen to the mentors, listen to your advisors. I, I think it's really important to have like, purpose in what you're doing and like, really believing in what you're trying to work for. So mm -hmm. you, we really want to try to do things that impact people. And I think as long as you are doing something that you're engaged in and interested in, then it's going to be much more enjoyable to do that kind of work. So Believe in what you do. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you both very much for your time and wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you. you, Aaron. Hey guys, thanks a ton for watching Starting Ideas. If you enjoyed this interview with Forcia co-founders, Charlie and Mark, please hit the subscribe button, donate on Patreon, and comment down below. What questions would you like to ask Charlie and Mark about their research or their experience spinning up a company? We'd love to hear from you.